Porky Pig and Bugs Bunny, Just Like Magic, a little golden book by Stella Williams Nathan, illustrated by Bob Toten and Tom McKimson. Porky Pig looked worried. Bugs, we've been all over town, he said. We've got to find jobs because today is Petunia's birthday. How will I be able to buy her a present? Bug scratched one long ear and pointed down the road. How about working at that country place over there, he suggested. Looks like it's got a terrific vegetable garden. I see lettuce, and radishes, green beans, and wow, carrots growing in that garden. Down the road they went, and Porky rang the doorbell. A tall, thin man opened the door. Good morning, sir. My name is Porky Pig. And this is my friend Bugs Bunny. We are two willing workers looking for a job. That's right, Doc, Bugs said eagerly. We figured this place could really stand a good cleaning up. The tall, thin man looked doubtful. Well, I could use some help. But I, I he stopped short, then went on. Come on in. There's certainly plenty to do. And he brought out mops and brooms and dusters and pails and soaps and cleansers. My name is Mr. Mortimer, he said. I'll be in to check on you later. When Porky started to dust all the furniture, Bugs was mopping slowly and dreamily when he knocked over the pail and water spilled all over the floor. With a sigh, Porky mopped the spilled water. Why don't you dust, Bugs, said Porky. You can't get in as much trouble that way. Bugs started to dust a table. Suddenly there was a loud crash. The table had collapsed to the floor. Bugs jumped back in alarm. Hey, what's up, Doc? He demanded, this is a pretty spooky furniture Mortimer's got here. Porky shook his head. Come on, Bugs. I'll put it together, he said. Nothing seems to be broken. You take the silver polish and work on shining up that suit of armor. You can't hurt that, I hope. As Bugs polished the armor, the visor fell down with a loud clang, and Bugs raised the visor and, and took a, a look inside. Look, Porky, he shouted, as he brought out a, a large kerchief from inside the helmet. He waved it at Porky, and the handkerchief turned into a bouquet of flowers. And then four pigeons flew out of the helmet, and one of them perched cheerily on top of Bugs's head. Bugs turned pale. Hey, what goes on? he gasped. Suddenly, Porky began to laugh. I think I know, Bugs, he chuckled. I think we're cleaning a magician's house. He used pigeons in that, his act. You're right, Bugs looked very relieved. That breakaway table, that bouquet of flowers, those pigeons flying out of the suit of armor. Of course, I knew it all the time, Porky. Then Bugs stretched out on the huge sofa. I don't know what about you, Porky, but cleaning spooky magician's houses wears me out. Are there any kinds of houses that don't tire you out, Bugs? asked Porky. Just then, Mr. Mortimer entered the room. I doubt it, Porky, he commented, just resting. Ah, Bugs, he looked around. Well, you two have certainly worked hard. At least one of you has worked hard. Mr. Mortimer hesitated. I'm ashamed to tell you this, but I don't have enough money to pay you properly. Is there is there something I can do to reward you for all your hard work? Well, of all the nerve, and after I worked till I'm exhausted, said Bugs. What did you have in mind, sir? asked Porky, after shushing Bugs. Well, Mr. Mortimer said shyly, I'm Mortimer the Marvelous, and if I do say so, I'm terrific. May I put on a show for you? Porky was thrilled. That's a wonderful idea, Mr. Mortimer. I'll invite my friend Petunia, too as a special birthday treat. Just a minute, said Bugs. None of that magician's show stuff for me. After all my hard work, I deserve a bushel of carrots at least. Well, I'm not so sure you worked all that hard, Bugs, Mr. Mortimer said, a bit scornfully, but I'll make a bargain. If you'll act as my special assistant during the magic show for Porky and Petunia, I'll give you your bushel of carrots. And that was how it happened that later that evening, Mr. Mortimer, the marvelous, reached into a hat and pulled out a surprise bugs. Porky and Petunia laughed and clapped. Mr. Mortimer helped Bugs climb into a large trunk and then closed the lid. What's up, Doc? 
asked Bugs, and a moment later, he crashed through a trap door. Porky and Petunia clapped again as Mr. Mortimer opened the trunk and showed that it was empty. A moment later, Bugs came limping back into the room, and the magician told him to lie on the table. Rise, rise, Bugs, he chanted, waving his hands. Suddenly, Bugs felt himself floating in the air as light as a feather. No, no, help, help, shouted Bugs. Let me down, please let me down. Mr. Mortimer clapped his hand sharply, and Bugs fell to the floor with a crash. Delighted to be of help, old boy, murmured the magician. Later, Bugs, looking weary and sore, complained as he carried home a bushel of carrots he had earned. Boy, am I tired, he exclaimed. I haven't worked that hard in ages. That magician was really hard on me with all those tricks. I thought he was a very nice fellow, Porky said happily. And look at the wonderful present I have up my sleeve. He said it is for you, Petunia. Porky brought out a long, brightly colored scarf and handed it to Petunia. Happy birthday! Thank you, Porky, Petunia exclaimed. It's just beautiful. It will remind me of a wonderful evening. And down the road they walked with Bugs Bunny carrots disappearing one after another, just like magic. Porky, Pig, and Bugs Bunny, just like magic. <laughs>